Hello, this is Joe and welcome back to the channel. You know, it was just a few weeks ago that I was working on some planetary imaging with this Edge HD8 and I decided to switch gears and go back to some deep space. Uh, there was a, a very cool image that I saw, a very cool capture uh, from a gentleman named Tommy Lease. Uh, he's also known as Colorado Astro on Instagram. Now, if you don't follow him, you really should because he's got some amazing images and recently he had just won an APOD for one of them. But this image that he took, he called the Rings of Cygnus and I wanted to give it a shot myself because it was really cool and I hadn't seen that before. And I wanted to share it with all of my viewers because I think it's just a really cool uh, nebula that, that nobody's really shooting. I'm gonna be using the Edge HD8 and I've got the reducer on it. Now I had to put the 2600mm Pro on. Normally I use the 294mm Pro, but it was getting too close uh, and I needed a wider field of view. I've noticed that with my Edge HD8 and the 2600, my images are a little softer than with the 294, but I figured let's give it a shot. I need that field of view. Uh, I, Really, I think what you'd want is around 900 to 1200 millimeters, and this is going to give me 1422 with the reducer on, but with the uh, APS-C size sensor, it will widen my field of view quite a bit, so I can get a little bit more in, um, hopefully, than, than with the 294 on it. I'm also going to be using the off-axis guider with the 174 mini. So this target... Um, I had never shot before, but I think I've seen it many times before and never realized what it was. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing what I can do with it. Uh, I've gotten a few nights worth of data now on it, and there hasn't been much moon, so that's really cool. And tonight I'm going to go ahead, I think tonight's going to be my fourth night worth of data, and I wanted to get as much data as I could to bring out as much detail out of the nebula as possible and it could even be a supernova remnant it, it's kind of reminiscent of of what a super uh, nova remnant looks like and it might not be a nebula at all i honestly don't know i don't even know if there's an official ngc or lbn or ic number with this uh, all i know it is because i saw an image from colorado astro on instagram and i decided i'm gonna steal that I actually asked him if I could uh, get the the coordinates because I didn't even know what the coordinates were and I went around searching and I couldn't find it. So he did send me that and I appreciate that, Tommy. Thank you so much for sending me the coordinates and hopefully I could do this image as much justice as you did. This really isn't going to be a very long video. Uh, pretty much I just wanted to make a video about capturing this particular nebula and then to show it off and to bring some attention to it so that other people might be able to uh, try and image it as well. Now I am going to take all of the data that I do get and I'm going to share that uh, with my members in uh, Google Drive uh, like I do a lot of data that I gather and hopefully if uh, you guys get a chance, the, the channel members, if you get a chance go ahead and grab that data and see what you could do with it. I would love to see some other renditions besides the one that I'm going to try. And uh, I, it's really uh, interesting because there's no Oxygen 3 data to speak of. So what you're really making is uh, hydrogen alpha and then sulfur 2 for, for blue and green. Now you don't necessarily have to do it that way. You could rearrange them or try some pixel math on them which I plan on doing myself, but it's very interesting that you're only going to be able to get uh, hydrogen alpha and sulfur two. Now I did try a 10 minute sub in oxygen three, and this is what I got. And unfortunately, there's nothing there at all. Now I was going to continue to try and take some more and hopefully in a stack I could bring some out. But I kind of got nervous and thought, I better just sink all of my time into what is giving me some data, which was the hydrogen and the sulfur. Here we are in the framing wizard of Nina. And these are the actual coordinates that I used. And this is what the field of view around the frame uh, is supposed to look like. And 
so far this is what I'm getting as well and the RA is right here is 20 hours 24 minutes and 46 seconds and the declination is 46 degrees 23 minutes and 49 seconds and when I had the 294 on it was cutting a lot of this out and I think that there's some really nice nebulosity right here that if you had a little bit less reach that uh, it would look nicer to grab some of this as well uh, unfortunately with my Z81 it, it's way too much and and I'm getting a huge swath here and then when I uh, zoom in I'm losing a lot of the detail uh, in the ring um, I did try it and I didn't like it so that's why I switched to the Edge HD8 last night didn't go quite as well as I had hoped for uh, some clouds came in late that were not forecast and it actually even dumped some snow on the back peak uh, behind me here and, which is pretty to look at but it wasn't great for me last night now it didn't actually snow right here so I was lucky there and uh, but when I woke up this morning and I looked at my sulfur subs I couldn't use any of them so unfortunately uh, I'm just going to have to try and process this image with what I have. I don't have, um, I have about half uh, the sulfur compared to the hydrogen alpha. So we'll see how it comes out. Uh, hopefully I could do something or get something for you guys. And uh, I'll go ahead and share my data out as well for all my members. I do appreciate that. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed the image and we'll see you in the next video.